What's good, everybody? What's going on? JB here, back with another Cyber Insight live stream video. Today's going to be pretty exciting because if you've been following the content that I've been putting out the past uh, year or so, it's going to be a little bit of a culmination of a whole bunch of different types of certain learning activities. Um, I'm going to be talking about how I went and got nine certs in about the past year and only spent about $150 on it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go through uh, a few tips and tricks on all of that stuff. Not necessarily talking about, you know, in-depth breakdowns of all of the particular certs. Although if you do have any questions about those and throw them in the chat and we can definitely hit those up. Um, but since I've already done video breakdowns and a whole bunch of different study content for that, that's not really what we're going to be talking about today. Um, but more so kind of if you're getting into IT and you're trying to find uh, some ways to get some free training or free certs or discounted certs and, you know, you don't want to go out there and spend a, a few thousand dollars on a training class or, you know, you just aren't really sure uh, where to start, then we're going to kind of talk about a, a few things uh, that at least I've picked up and, uh, you know, are some ways that might be able to help you uh, get some knowledge and some certifications at a little bit of a lower price. Um, do want to say happy early Thanksgiving to everybody. Um, I know a lot of people uh, are getting ready. They're either at the grocery store now, already starting their cooking and all that type of stuff. So if you are dropping in here uh, this evening, I highly appreciate you being here. Um, I have a drink here with me. Um, so if you happen to have a drink with you, then uh, cheers, happy holidays. Um, I got some Casamigos and uh, what is it? Strawberry lemonade, I think. So doing, doing pretty good with that. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that I want to hit before we jump over uh, into the other screen. Um, oh, we are doing the uh, the Tech Sec Chicks giveaway, uh, kind of, you know, going along with uh, the fact that I recently passed a Pentest Plus. Uh, we're going to be giving away a uh, study bundle. So it is the study guide and the practice test book uh, that I use to actually pass uh, my Pentest Plus. And then uh, an exam voucher as well, courtesy of uh, TechSec Chicks in celebration of their one year anniversary. So that's gonna be pretty cool. We'll do that um, at the end of the stream. And uh, yeah, that'll be pretty cool for, for somebody um, who hopefully will be able to take that stuff and uh, go past that exam. It's a pretty good exam. Um, have a whole bunch of folks kind of jumping in here, throwing some comments in here. We'll throw them up real quick before we, uh, we hop over into the other screen. Hello, hello, hello. Kiki, what's good? Got some more people. Hey, Tish, what's up? You got people cooking for you? Uh, I'm doing some cooking as soon as I get off of the stream, so that uh, that should be pretty good. Uh, Casamigos and pineapple juice, for sure. I mean, pineapple juice uh, with almost any type of alcohol in them is pretty good. And Texec chicks, there we go, awesome. Uh, so. As always, before I hop over there, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe, notification, share the videos with your friends, all that type of good stuff. And we will kind of just move over into this other screen here. And I figure we just kind of start from here and kind of talk a little bit um, about certifications and training materials and different ways that you can go about uh, getting those and hopefully getting those uh, at a lower cost. Uh, because sometimes that can be quite a bit of a barrier to entry as far as getting into the industry. And so if there's some different paths you can do to kind of get that knowledge and help booster your resume and get you uh, a new job or a better job, then uh, yeah, I'm all about that. So uh, here is a website called Credly. This is kind of, uh, I don't know, this is kind of a newer thing that they've been doing, at least for when I started doing certs back in 2005 or 2006, they didn't have any of this stuff. Uh, where it was kind of centrally locating information about all of the different certifications that you were passing. So if we just kind of look um, at this top area here, these are all the different certs that I passed uh, last year or within the past year or so. Um, we have six different Juniper certs. So remember, I was hitting that stuff up really, really hard. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Juniper is one of the largest uh, networking device providers Um not quite the footprint that Cisco has, but, you know, right there beneath them with kind of like Palo Alto and some other folks. I love Juniper stuff, been using it for a long time. So did six certs with them, uh, their routing and switching, their security, design, DevOps, cloud, um, their Wi-Fi. I'm trying to think if there was something else that I'm missing there. It might be. 
But there were six of those total. And then I did two different cloud certs. I did the Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure Fundamentals, which is their entry level cert. And the um, AWS uh, CCP, which is their entry level cert. And then uh, back in the, I want to say summertime, I did the CompTIA Pentest Plus. Um, I would say out of these is generally speaking, the two cloud certs are def definitely entry level. The Juniper certs would be more entry level ish from a networking perspective. If you've already done some entry level networking certs like the NetPlus or something like that, um, not necessarily something you'd want to go into if you don't have any IT background. And then the uh, Pentest Plus definitely was not an entry level cert. It wasn't, you know, a super advanced um, pen testing cert. But uh, out of all of the certs that I did, it definitely was the, the hardest this past year. So um, in kind of looking at that and kind of figuring out, you know, how, how the hell did I do uh, all nine of these certs and only spend $150 on it, um, it really comes down to a few different things when it comes to getting certs. At least so stepping back from um, a little bit of a higher level, when I go to study for a cert, I kind of am, am looking at a few different things. I'm looking at uh, finding learning content, right? So I, I want to learn whatever it is that the cert is covering, uh, whatever the objectives are. I want to end up finding some type of practice tests or quiz, and then uh, some type of hands-on or labs, uh, if it is uh, information or topics that you're unfamiliar with. So just off the bat, if you aren't really sure how to kind of break up the process for going after certs, those are the three things that I'd focus on as far as trying to get information um, that will help you get ready to pass a certification. So what we end up happen having uh, that kind of happened in the past, I don't know, two years, I think since COVID hit, is a lot of the companies uh, were starting to put out uh, different types of incentives to get folks to go after um, certifications. Uh, there were some companies that were already offering free training and then other ones that have kind of have continued to step, um, step that up a bit. And so if we kind of look at some different uh, free training programs that are out there, the Juniper stuff is excellent. So for all of their um, entry level associate certs, they have free training and practice tests for all of that. Um, so that right off the bat is, is a great opportunity, especially compared to... Um, Cisco, I think, does have some free stuff as well, but I think it's uh, a little bit harder to kind of find that stuff. Although we can get into kind of training from different third parties and people, you know, maybe such as myself who put stuff out on YouTube. That's always a, an avenue that you can go down. But normally best case is to kind of start with the information that's coming from the vendor that's going to be um, providing the cert. So Juniper kind of did their thing. And uh, for a while there, they actually were giving out the exams for free. So that's kind of how I, I was able to, uh, to do mine was they were giving out uh, free exam vouchers if you got, I think it was 70 or 75%, um, I think it was 70 on their practice uh, exam voucher test, right? Um, and if you're interested in any of those, I actually did, uh, I did a whole bunch of videos on the practice exams that they had um, under this program. So that would definitely get you ready to take the uh, voucher exam tests. Uh, they got so many folks doing that, they were starting to get some people that actually were kind of scamming the system. So they actually had to kind of cut back uh, on the discount that they were they were giving on that. So now instead of it being free, it's 75% off, um, which is still 50 bucks, which 50 bucks for a cert is um, about the lowest amount that you're going to pay for one. So it's still an excellent value, especially considering that they have the free training and then they also have virtual labs that you can do um, called the, the J labs, um, which kind of work in concert with the, the training material that they have. So that is, that is excellent. So I got a bunch of questions coming in here and uh, yeah, we can kind of throw those up here real quick. Uh, let's see. So real question, uh, were you working while you were preparing and getting all these certs? If so, how did you manage yourself? Talk about that too. Um, so most definitely, yeah, I was, I was working, um, I was working the whole time on that. So, I mean, kind of the way that that ended up working out for me. Um, so a little bit of, I don't know, <laughs> cheat code for me is a lot of these, um, certs, at least the Juniper stuff. 
I was kind of already familiar with. So it was more like it was validating uh, the skills that uh, I already had. But really kind of approaching it from the perspective of someone who, um, you know, isn't super versed with that. You could also look to see like what it is in your work environment that you want to get a certification in that you're already kind of working on day to day. And so that way, kind of the hands on stuff that you're getting with that and you're learning kind of would align with whatever it is that you um, that you're studying for. Uh, obviously, that's not always the case and not always something that that someone can do. And if that's not the case, then, yeah, you just kind of have to find the, the time to uh, to study, really. Um, and that can be definitely kind of challenging. I, I'm in no way in me making this video am I saying that someone should go out and get nine certs in a year. <laughs> that kind of just worked out that way because I was trying to make uh, content to help out new folks that are getting into the industry and put it up on YouTube. Um, for me, it's not like I would go out and try and get, you know, nine uh, senior level certs in, in one year's time period, right? That would just be uh, way overkill and very, very hard to do. Um, I think kind of if I step back from that, though, and look at as far as material that was completely outside of the scope of stuff that I would do, like the Pentest Plus was definitely, you know, aligned with that. And that took a lot of hands on um hands-on learning, a lot of hands-on labs and stuff like that. And really all I did in going through that process was turn it into content on YouTube. So pretty much all of those Try Hack Me video walkthroughs that I was doing, well, yes, I was doing it to kind of explain things from my perspective as an IT person who might be familiar with some things but haven't, hasn't really done any pen testing uh, to folks who are watching the, the channel. It also was, that was my study time. So it just kind of, you know, worked out well that way. Um, another thing that you could do within your job is, you know, a lot, a lot of places sometimes don't have an issue with you actually, you know, studying or researching as long as it doesn't impact, you know, the work that's going on there. And especially if, if your studying turns into researching, then they might not really know the difference. So <laughs> that's one, one way to go about it. Uh, let's see, another question that I'll throw up. How come you skipped the CYSA? You went from Sec Plus to Penta. Well, all right. So let's let's level set with that too. Um, my Security Plus is from like 2006. So uh, I went from Sec Plus to SysP, and then the architecture version of the SysP. So um, the reason why I did the Pen Test Plus though um, is actually one of the things that we'll be talking about in a little bit as far as how to find cheaper certs or che cheaper exams. And that is, it just happened to uh, come out that they were doing a, um, a beta exam. So this is something that if you want to take uh, CompTIA exams, their normal exams are like $350. So it's actually, it's, the exams are kind of expensive. But whenever they do beta exams, they're only $50. So um, that was $50 out of my $150, uh, you know, went towards taking the, uh, the Pentest Plus. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of why I did it. I, I took the Pentest Plus because it was there and it was available. It was $50 and I thought that, uh, it would be good content to make, uh, on YouTube. Um, why I haven't done the CYSA yet? Um, I might, I, I think, uh, right now I'm actually, uh, studying the CCSP. So that's the, uh, cloud certified, uh, security professional. Uh, that's another one that is, uh, done by the same organization that does, uh, the SysP. So um, I'm actually doing that and the um, AWS SysOps admin. So kind of studying both of those at the same time. But I might get back to this, the CYSA at some point. Um, let's see. We'll throw this, we'll throw this one up and then we'll move on and then get back to more questions a little bit later. From my understanding, CompTIA's CERT Pyramid has CYSA and Pentest on the same tier, but in different different focus, uh, knowledge domains after completing set plus. I would agree with that. Um, like I said, the pen test plus is definitely not, uh, entry level, uh, where I think the sec plus a plus and net plus is, is considered. So, so I'm gonna take a sip real quick. So as far as other types of training, um, so let's talk about kind of like the Juniper stuff is very good. Microsoft, if you're interested in Microsoft, they are constantly putting out different types of free training that also comes with a uh, free exam voucher. So for instance, this right here is one still going on right now. I think it goes on until the end of November. 
and it's their uh, cloud skills challenge. So pretty much they have some learning content you have to go through and answer the questions. I don't remember how many hours of training it was. I want to say it was like maybe eight or 16, maybe 16. Um, so it's pretty much you're doing the course for whichever one of these uh, exams that you want to do. And then once you pass the course, then you get a free voucher for any of these exams. So they got um, some decent ones in here. They got a few of the, the security ones. They got the uh, Azure admin one. So again, this is a, a great thing that um, Microsoft does. They do this multiple times a year too. So that's kind of the other thing. Um, just because the vendor doesn't have uh, the free training or the free exam voucher out at the moment, that doesn't mean that at some point throughout the year they won't have uh, exam discounts or actual free vouchers. So you kind of just have to keep your eyes out on that. I mean, I would maybe maybe even go to the point of setting up regular um, like Google alerts, which you can do. I have a video on how to do uh, Google email alerts. Uh, if you're interested, I can even put a link for it in, in the description. But that way, you know, whenever anything pops up on Google that matches a key phrase that you're looking for when it comes to this type of stuff, then you'll be alerted and then you can go and, and get into this. Um, let's see if there was some other ones that were kind of worth pointing out. Splunk has a whole bunch of free training um, that I think you can then go and take their certs for. Um, Google, I wasn't able to find free certs from Google, but there is a whole bunch of training that's free out there. And this is where you're kind of getting into the going to a third party provider and stuff like that. So um, if you watched any of my AWS stuff, um, you saw that I use exam pro for the AWS CCP. Um, they actually have uh, these entry level exams. They have either a paid version of their content or a free version of their content. The difference is the paid version comes with some practice exams and some cheat sheets and some other things. But if you don't want to pay for that and you just want the straight videos, um, they just they offer that for free. Um, and so I found that to be super helpful for the um, for the CCP. I would fully expect that when it comes to the Google Cloud stuff and the Azure stuff, that that would be another uh, avenue that you could go down uh, to at least get the free training. Then at that point, you know, you're going to have to pay for the exam. I wasn't able to find uh, any time recently where uh, AWS was giving away free exams, but I think they have in the past. Uh, and then also once you pass one, uh, then you get a discount for your next one. So that's also another thing to look at. I think CompTIA does the same as well, where uh, you do get uh, discounts and some of them are heavy. Some of them are like, you know, 50% off for your next exam. So again, um, something to just kind of be aware of and, and look for and search for. Um, so we kind of talked about these here specific towards the ones that I did. Oh, something, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't hit up uh, and talk about Try Hack Me. I think Try Hack Me, as far as hands-on learning systems out there when it comes to cybersecurity stuff, I don't think that there's a better one out there. Um, they have a whole bunch of free rooms, which are awesome that go into all these um, kind of different learning paths. Um, some of these are related to certs, some of them aren't. So for instance, like the the uh, the Pentest Plus was definitely the one that I was hitting up a lot. And without a doubt, I would not have been able to pass the exam without going through the rooms that I went through on this. Uh, and you see here, even if you complete the, the pathway there, then you get 10% off the exam. So, you know, every little bit helps. Um, the cyber defense one might actually be quite a bit aligned with the CYSA. It probably has a little bit more than what the CS, the CYSA does, but it definitely could, could get you going there. So, um, definitely sign up and use try hack me, use the free version. It's awesome. And if you have the ability to pay for, uh, the annual subscription, I'm trying to remember how much it is. I think it's maybe $60 or $90 or I don't know, go and see whatever they're doing for black Friday, because I'm sure that they have some deals on there that, you know, would be pretty good. Uh, most of these training places actually will have some type of holiday deals. So again, perfect time to kind of uh, make a move as far as buying training or, or stuff like that around the holidays. All right, let me throw up uh, some other questions. Let's see. Okay, the Microsoft Cloud Challenge is great. Everyone should check it out. Nice to check out a new system without paying for it. Exactly. Yep. Uh, and I actually really uh, enjoyed the Microsoft uh, exam so like for 
uh, the Azure Fundamentals, that was the only exam that I've ever taken where you actually get partial credit for your answers. Um, I thought that that was awesome. I wish that more vendors did that. I mean, you, you're getting credit for at least knowing something versus it being completely wrong. Um, and I just thought the layout of the exam and the way that they use different formats of questions and things like that, I thought were, you know, it was a, uh, I don't know, it was just a fresh experience compared to your normal uh, vendor exams that I've seen in the past. So I, I was pleasantly surprised with that. That was the first time I've ever taken uh, a Microsoft exam and it definitely uh, made me open to taking more in the future. I'll throw this up. Do you know any pathway for someone looking to enter cybersecurity and be more on the blue side? Yeah, so that would be that that um, the, that cyber defense uh, that cyber defense one here um, in Try Hack Me definitely. I mean, if we just click into it and take a look and see the type of stuff that it covers. Um, so threat and vulnerability management. We've already done the Nessus. We did a video on the Nessus one in here, which was really really good. Um, security operations and monitoring. Kiki, we need to get back and finish that Splunk room too and knock out the 300, 400 level questions. But that's, the Splunk stuff was awesome. We did some Windows stuff. Uh, let's see, threat emulation. Yeah, I mean, I think that this coupled with um, reading up on the CYSA definitely would be, you know, get you in the right direction. I mean. It, the thing is with certs, and the thing to remember with certs is really the purpose of them, besides, you know, the fact that they might get your you in the door somewhere, uh, get you past some HR screening and stuff like that. Uh, the purpose isn't to learn how to pass the exam, right? I mean, that that's what you need to do to get to that point. But really, it's about looking holistically at the objectives that are there and trying to become um, competent in the things that the exam is trying to cover. So sometimes, you know, going a little bit off script to kind of pick up some other things that might be outside of a particular exam, but kind of mesh together and is really what you're going to be doing, you know, in a real world environment is uh, something that you definitely want to take a look at. Hack the box, try hack me. Yep. All, all really, really good stuff. All right. Let's see. Yep, setting up uh, after setting up at Elk Lab, Lab Splunk is so nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's there's a lot there's a lot to that. Elk is great though. Elk works works really well. It just takes a little bit more uh, work on the on the back end to get uh, things ingested the right way and uh, you know get things aligned and working the way that you want. Where Splunk is a little bit easier uh, out of the box. But you know if you uh, if you're in an environment that doesn't have the money for Splunk, then you know, that's obviously why you want to go that way. Uh, good plug for Splunk, though. Um, so they got the free training, and uh, you can download a free version of Splunk, use it at home, build out your own lab. It's free up to a certain amount of data that it processes, which hopefully in your lab you aren't processing that much data to where it would actually push above that level. So uh, definitely a very easy way to get some hands-on with Splunk which if you are going down uh, that path of the blue team stuff, um, you are more than likely going to end up running into an environment where Splunk is going to be one of the main tools that you use. All right, let's see what else. How important is it to learn Splunk? <laughs> I, uh, whatever I just said, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I'll say this kind of when it comes to learning any type of tool, learning the, the fundamentals of the, uh, I'm trying to, the technology that the tool is supposed to be helping with is, you know, is equally as important, if not more important, right? Than just learning how to click through the GUI and maybe run some searches, right? So understanding where Splunk would fit into an organization what are the use cases that you'd be using it for? Um, also the types of, you know, well, use cases kind of aligns with the types of things that you'd want to be looking for. That is definitely paramount because I've actually um, been in some situations where, yeah, people have Splunk, they have it set up and they don't really know what it is that they want to be looking for. 
Um, they don't know what are the what are the things from a cybersecurity perspective that they should be looking for. Um, and then, so at that point, you have a tool that no one's using, right? So kind of understanding uh, an IT environment, the different types of logs that you have, uh, the different types of devices that you have, the different types of risks that you have, um, both with those tools and the way that your environment is architected, understanding, um, you know, what types of things from the logs are important to the level that you want to either have things in a dashboard or have uh, alerts generated or have some other type of automated event get kicked off to do some other type of job. Um, that part needs to go with the nuts and bolts of how to configure Splunk and how to create a dashboard and how to use um, their searching language. Let's see. All right, so we talked about Try Hack Me, talked about Splunk. We talked about kind of those different uh, vendor free training type of stuff. Um, the other thing that I kind of mentioned a bit before was using third party stuff. So you have a whole bunch of other um, avenues out there to get free or very, very cheap training. Um, you don't need to go uh, to a technical boot camp and go and spend thousands of dollars on stuff, especially for uh, entry level information. You can, if you have the money and that's the way that you learn and you need a little bit more uh, guidance, then you can definitely go down that path and do that, but you don't need to. Um, so YouTube has a whole bunch of free content. Um, I mean, it, it's to the point on YouTube now, it absolutely blows my mind. Um, when I first started off uh, doing IT back in, you know, uh, 2003, 2004, the only way that you learn stuff was you either took a college class, you actually went to a training that was hosted by a vendor that was super expensive, or you went to a bookstore somewhere and bought the one book that was, you know, written on that topic. And that was it. So the fact now that you have all these different people that actually create learning content, it's free, it's on YouTube. Um, and I get like, not everybody's, uh, not everybody likes every type of content creator. Different people teach things different ways and that can be kind of challenging sometimes, but there's so much out there that there's somebody out there who's gonna be able to speak things to you that resonate with you, is gonna be able to take uh, complex ideas and break them down in a way that you know makes sense to you. So um, that is kind of the challenge as far as you know finding you know who isn't full of BS and actually knows what they're talking about and who has a um, a teaching style that resonates with you. So yeah, there definitely is um, a little bit of legwork that goes into like kind of finding that. The flip side of that though is if you just like if you didn't have that and you're just stuck in a class and the professor that you had just sucks and uh, you know you're having a really hard time learning the content then you're kind of you know in a very very difficult spot where at least you have options to be able to find other things and even if you're in that situation where maybe uh, whoever the instructor is isn't able to articulate things in a way that makes sense to you you at least can supplement that with other types of resources online that are free. So um, you do have that as an option. Then you have kind of the other third party training stuff that is still, if it's not free, it's really cheap. And so things like uh, Udemy and stuff like that, especially uh, around this time of year, I think almost every content creator is gonna be putting uh, their stuff on you know, Black Friday sale and stuff like that. Um, I actually feel kind of bad because God knows how many courses I have that I bought. Um, not spending a lot of money, right? You know, $10, $20. Um, some cases, some of them I got for free that I haven't used. Um, but don't be like me. Actually get a course and actually, uh, you know, learn the information from it, use it, and then uh, turn around and make that applicable to what you're doing in your job. Get a better position, get paid more, you know, all that good stuff. Um Let's see, what other types of content did I want to bring up? Uh, so YouTube, Udemy, yeah, there's a few other, there's a few other content provide, provider services out there, but just that was kind of the gist of it is that, again, there's different levels as far as what you can get for information without having to spend um, a lot of money. And then I think the last thing that we wanted to hit up on this um, 
was the different types of exams and how much they are and where you can get them for free and stuff like that. We kind of did kind of did talk through that a little bit at the beginning, right? So like we already talked about the Microsoft uh, Cloud Skills Challenge. That comes out multiple times a year. So if you're interested in a Microsoft cert and it's not something that a company says you need to have this next week, then I would just wait until Microsoft uh, does one of their certification challenges again. It seems like they do it three or four times a year. So that's definitely one avenue to go. On the networking side of stuff, the Juniper stuff, um, they're doing uh, the 75% off all of the uh, associate certs. And then they started this new program called the 531. So if you go and you pass five of their associate certs, um, then I believe they give you, let me look this up just so I'm, I'm not completely making it up, but I think that they give you three free, um, three free, uh, specialist certs. Let's see. So, yeah, so when you pass uh, five of the associate certs, you get three discounted specialist certs, right? Uh, and then when you pass three of the uh, specialist certs, then you get one discounted uh, professional level uh, cert. So uh, those are 75% off exam vouchers, which is pretty good because the prices of those exams go up. I believe the specialist, Specialist exams are 300, and I believe the professional exams are 400. I think that's how it goes. Associate level is 200, specialist 300, and the professional are 400. Um, so that's definitely an awesome program to get into, especially from the networking side of things. Uh, I mentioned AWS has done some stuff in the past, but in the past year or so, I haven't really seen any free stuff come out for that. But Always keep your eye out on that because all these companies are always, you know, coming up with different things um, as far as incentives to get people spun up into their stuff. And then the last thing um, is look for beta exams. So I mentioned that's why I took the Pentest Plus. CompTIA has, I don't know, how many certs does CompTIA have? I feel like they must have, they must have eight certs maybe. Maybe more than that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Not all of these are good certs to go after, by the way. So, you know, don't be going after the the fundamentals one. Um, unless it's something that a job is requiring you to do, then do it. But um, so with all of these, they are um, you know they are always coming out with new exams, and this is the same thing for other vendors too. Um, I just don't know um, how frequently the other vendors actually offer uh, lower prices for beta exams. That's it. something to look into, though. But with CompTIA, at least, $50 for a beta exam. So something to definitely uh, take a look at. I feel that the new Network Plus, I don't know if that just came out. Let's see. Yeah they just had this come out. So they must've just had a beta on that as well. You can see that it's almost $350. So again, you just kind of keep your eye out for that type of stuff. Um, if you didn't know that you had the ability to get beta exams at a cheaper price, then, um, then there you go. I also would say um, on those beta exams, I had a friend who did this and I think that this might actually help. Uh, they have a whole bunch of feedback sections, right? I think, now, this is completely um, completely anecdotal, okay? I don't know that this is really a thing, but, you know, maybe some uh, some good vibes your way if you do this. Um, since they have a feedback section on, on the end of the exam and the questions, because they're really trying to, um, you know, get stuff figured out, I think if you actually leave them a decent amount of combat, uh, comments and feedback, especially on questions that you don't like, I would not be surprised if you don't, you know, blow the test out of the water if you're kind of like on the edge that uh, if they actually see that you kind of have some feelings in some ways about some of this stuff, um, that might be something that might be able to get you over the line. Um, again, anecdotal, not completely sure, but maybe something to uh, to keep in mind if you're taking some beta exams. 
Let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to cover there. I don't think so. Does anybody have uh, any questions about any uh, any of this stuff as related to learning content, practice tests, hands-on labs, uh, exam vouchers, things like that? And if no one does, then we can go ahead and uh, and start to wrap this up. We'll move over to the other screen and just give it a minute. Oh, wait, you know what? I was about to leave and we didn't even do the giveaway. Do need to do the giveaway. So, um, I think we had a bunch of folks who had posted some stuff on um, on the Tech Sec Chicks and, and Kiki's post. Um, they had to put up one of the, a blog that they were doing that was kind of, uh, covering their cybersecurity journey. And, uh, yeah, so we'll throw these, these folks in here. All the blogs are really good. We weren't going to be able to choose one between them. So we're just going to spin it and see how it goes. Um, and whoever wins, wins. And, and there we go. So there we go. Underscore one Tobes. Now, cool thing with that was I think uh, he just threw his stuff in earlier today. I did go and look at it. It's a pretty good blog with some pretty good stuff in there. So congratulations, man. Uh, I'll hit you up on Twitter and uh, we'll get you uh, taken care of. So let's see. Let me move over to my other screen and then answer a few of these other questions. We got that. How do you know if you're overlapping or not? Uh, overlapping on what? Like between uh, between content, between certs, or I'll take a sip while you respond. <laughs> So how do you how do you make sure that you aren't overlapping on the uh, the knowledge between certs? Um, and I assume that's what you mean. Um, I mean sometimes there is some overlap, um, and sometimes it's just necessary to to get the other certs. Um, don't necessarily look at that as a negative. Look at that as you've already learned some of the information that that cert in a vacuum you know, covers. So you're already partly prepared and you can kind of just expediently go through that section and move on to the stuff. I mean, that's definitely, you know, the case in, as you move up into um, more higher level certs and things like that, obviously there's different things um, that you will have already picked up from working in different types of environments um, that there might be, you know, overlap between different types of certs. I mean, I'm just trying to think of like an example. So for, I think a good example of that would be maybe like the, the CCNA versus the Juniper JNCIA uh, Junos exam. Both of those are their base um, routing and switching uh, associate exams, right? So a portion of that actually is covering kind of like networking fundamentals in some way. Not necessarily breaking it down as much as, you know, the network plus, but generally speaking. So yeah, if you were studying uh, the JNCI Junos and you go and you pass that, and then you go uh, to study the CCNA, there's going to be a bunch of information overlap there that you're going to be like, oh yeah, no, I already know that. And I already know that. And then you're really just focusing in on the, um, the specifics. So I guess, you know, a, a better question with that or a, a different question than that would be like, in what scenarios does it make sense to get multiple certs that kind of do have that overlap? Um, and I would say there's a few different scenarios where in my mind that would be cool. Um, that would be if it's different vendors um, and you're working with those different vendors, um, then that would make sense. So kind of that Juniper Cisco type of thing. Um, if it's vendor agnostic certs, so kind of like the CompTIA stuff, if it's 
not something that um, is dictated by your company organization contract or something that you specifically need to be able to get a certain job, then I wouldn't worry about getting, you know, a second or third one that kind of is in, in that same area. Um, I mean, obviously there's, there's unique caveats that come in into play w with different, different people and stuff like that. But, um, so for instance, like I have my CISP, I wouldn't go and try and find another cybersecurity, um, certification that's kind of at that same level covering that same stuff from a different, uh, vendor that is vendor agnostic. Like that wouldn't make any sense for me. Um, but I might go and get, um, you know, work on some Azure certs and then go work on some AWS certs. And there is overlap in kind of the, the fundamental cloud knowledge that goes back and forth between that. But then there's also vendor specific information. So I don't know. I think that at least from my perspective, that's the way that I would approach that. All right. Any other questions? All right. If not, then, uh, yeah, appreciate everybody dropping in. Uh, hope everybody has uh, a great Thanksgiving and everybody eats all of the delicious food that, <laughs> that they want to get. I'm going to start my cooking here uh, shortly, probably make myself uh, another margarita and then hit it up. So uh, as always, appreciate everybody dropping in. Make sure you smash the like button. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you aren't doing that yet and you're still here at this point. Uh, yeah, go get at it. Have a good holiday. We'll talk soon. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. All right.